The Shanghai Tower's design is similar to an ancient pagoda. Its structure is divided into nine vertical zones around a central composite steel and concrete core. To further strengthen the tower, huge perimeter columns and outriggers have been attached to the central core. The core is just like the main chunk of your body, and the two column, the exterior column outside is like the ski post. And this steel truss member is connecting your body and the column, giving you the, the, a much better stability for the building to resist earthquake. The earthquake proofing measures extend from the base of the tower to its tip. Here we are, coming up to the 125th floor of the tower, which is one of the most important rooms in the building. So why is this room so important? The answer is suspended above Dennis's head. You can see we have a 1,200 tons of steel block being hung four story above us. So why would engineers take up valuable floors and sacrifice the revenue they could generate with a steel block the weight of 600 four-door sedans? Boston's John Hancock Tower was completed in 1976. Its futuristic glass-clad design was ahead of its time. But not long after it opened, upper floor occupants complained of motion sickness as the building swayed with the wind. Engineer William LeMessurier came up with an ingenious solution. What I've got here is a very simple model of a skyscraper. It's a um, beam structure going up several stories. Turning a handle at the base of the structure mimics an earthquake. With steel structured buildings and glass buildings, of course, we're reducing the weight of those buildings. So you can actually go much taller. You can build them much taller. Uh, but then you do have this problem with sway. Le Mesurier's idea was to counteract the sway at the John Hancock Tower. He installed two steel boxes on the 58th floor. Each box was filled with several hundred tons of lead and placed on a steel plate. You have to imagine this is an 800 ton weight that I'm lifting up onto my skyscraper now. And I'm just gonna tie it to the top of my structure. The tuned mass damper, or TMD as it became known, had a dramatic effect. It's amazing. The structure is hardly moving. I mean, it's quite phenomenal. So what we're seeing here is the uh, mass damper oscillating out of phase with the vibration of the structure. In a building like this, you wouldn't have an 800-ton ball flying around violently <laughs> and uh, smashing into the walls and things. The principle is simple. As the building sways one way, it pulls the damper with it. As the building starts to sway back, the damper is still traveling in the opposite direction, so it stops the building from going too far. It's amazing how, uh, how much of an impact it has. It really does just stop the structure from swaying around. Without tune mass dampers today, uh, we just wouldn't have any of the kind of mega structures uh, that we have. The Shanghai Towers engineers have taken Le Mesurier's damping system to a whole new level. We are walking to the upper portion of the TMD system, two mass damper system. Without this two mass damper, we have to use a lot more structural steel and material to stiffen up the building. Despite taking up five floors and weighing over 1,000 tons, the Shanghai Tower's tuned mass damper actually makes the building cheaper and lighter to construct. 